Hello, welcome to Studio Pixel. Today we are going to discuss another nonlinear deformer that is sine. Now, sine is a mathematical presentation or mathematical term. Sine is actually presented through a curve, a kind of a wavelength. Okay, so how we can uh, apply that to uh, as a uh, deformer, as you can see. Okay, for creating that effect, um, we are going to use a small, uh, a basic cylinder. I create a poly cylinder over here and I'm just uh, increase the height and also the subdivision height which is very important for any kind of uh, deformers uh, we are using. And subdivisions are really really key factors that, has, uh, that is uh, going to help you see the how, how uh, in, in details that uh, of, of the effect of your, of your deformers. So you need to increase the subdivision height to a very good amount. Okay. I've already seen that on previous chapters in like bend and flare. So I will definitely recommend that if you are haven't seen those, please go through those. Uh, then we can understand why, why this subdivision height or subdivisions of uh, of any kind of polygonal object is very important for the nonlinear deformers. Okay, so by selecting that object, go to sign option box and go to edit and reset settings. I'm just leaving these. Uh, default values to uh, under, under these parameters and hit create okay now if we go on the wireframe mode by hitting 4 you can see that sine curve has been created and you can see the sine 1 handle has been uh, selected so go to the input and now we'll be discussing about these parameters the first parameter is the envelope that is a universal parameter for the deformers that uh, this will actually show you the entire effect of the of the of the nonlinear deformer that you're actually using over here. So before using before showing you the envelope thing, I have to imply or show you some effect of the particular uh, deformer. So by default, the wavelength value is two, which is the number of waves that you you can you want to create and the to to see the effect you have to increase the value of amplitude so hit five and if you increase the value of the amplitude immediately you can see the side the object has been bent through the uh, curve if you hit four and you can see the object has been actually uh, bending according to the curve so this is a really interesting one and now if i increase my wavelength you can see the bending value is actually decreasing because the length of the wave that is the wavelength it stands for the length of the single wave is really huge one like 3.4 if i'm decreasing the length of the wave like see now now my wavelength is this point to this point so this is my wavelength that is 0.6 so that means my waves are gonna shorter in that case your amplitude can be reduced like this way to to show you a very different kind of effect but you can see that my subdivision value of my polygonal object is not sufficient to maintaining this particular shape so I have to get back to the poly cylinder and I have to increase my subdivision value more now you can see that if I when I'm putting my subdivision value to a 39 or even more then then only uh, it is showing a, a very great amount of uh, output that we are actually looking for okay fine okay now I'm getting back to the sign so these are the uh, wavelength and amplitude and if you want to increase the length of this wave, like I want to increase this length from here to here, like this, and the object will be will actually, you know, uh, react accordingly according to my wavelength. So this is very interesting uh, that uh, how much uh, length of the wave you really want to show okay the next option is pretty interesting and the most important one perhaps because this is the offset value that is uh, going to uh, animate you the effect so if i if i go to the first frame and if i hit uh, a keyframe key selected and if i go to the 24 frame i'm just uh, giving it a big value 
over here around 3.8 and you can see this that this is uh, this is going to affect this is going to show you a very wiggly kind of effect like snakes are actually moves so this kind of a, a ripple effect that you can show you um, uh, through these uh, through these options so it's a very interesting one so, so it's the, one of the most important uh, aspects of the parameter of uh, sign uh, on our sign deformer so I just giving it a value of zero okay fine I'm deleting the keyframe okay now the drop off drop off is a very interesting one you can see the midpoint of this object this is the mid middle point of the nonlinear, and ab above this uh, midpoint is the high bound, and the below this is the low bound. So now, let me increase my wavelength. Sorry, decrease my wavelength. Kind of okay. Now, and also amplitude to a very great amount, because uh, to show to see the drop of value is a very interesting one if i increase my drop of value you can see in the middle section of my sine curve the amplitude amount is greater this is 0.3 and as it's going away the amount of my amplitude is getting lower and that's the drop off is all about so you can increase the drop of value and to one the maximum value and you can have your you know the effect of the drop uh, it will be something really you know just cooling down the effect and slowing down the entire effect and uh, and the mid section is will be the the most the maximum value of your amplitude if you want to increase the amplitude it all it will also increase the amplitude of the en entire sine curve but the maximum effect will gonna affect on the middle part and gradually that will decrease according to your drop off value so that is a that is a drop off and the same thing is uh, okay now this drop off I'm just uh, just uh, giving it a small amount of value fine now next two options are uh, pretty much common uh, in, while in bend and flare uh, like uh, low bound if you decrease the low bound value sorry uh, I'm decreasing I'm just in, if you increase the low bound value you can see the lower portion from the midpoint is not going to affect by the sine curve and if you offset value you see you can you can see, still see that object is moving according to the curve but it's not have any kind of bend effect so that is uh, you have to look after for the low bound and the same thing will go for the high bound if i decrease the value of a high bound and you can see immediately the object uh, the up portion of the object that is above the midpoint of the sine curve is not going to affect so uh, for from the sine curve so these are the high bound and low bound options that we have to uh, remember while using this op uh, this option. Okay, so just, uh, now I'm just going through the envelope option, which is uh, I've told you that uh, before uh, using uh, any kind of amplitude or wavelength value, I cannot show you this uh, uh, this value. This uh, you know. This option okay now drop of value is decrease the drop of value minus one fine now uh, if you decrease the envelope value you can see this immediate effect is actually gradually been decreased and if you hit zero the entire sine curve uh, effect the sine effect is actually in gone because that is the envelope uh, actually comes to play envelope is uh, let's see envelope is a value for uh, the overall effect of the sign or any other uh, nonlinear or deformers that is uh, that you are actually applying on it and you want to you know you want to decrease the amount of effect on the, on the entire object of that particular uh, uh, deformer so you can decrease the envelope value to 0.5 or maybe 0.6 or whatever you want for your desired results so that we will gonna affect the entirely so that is all about the envelope and hope you enjoy this and uh, so all the options have been covered so uh, let's, let's finish it okay fine so hope you enjoy this please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on Twitter and uh, like our Facebook page for exciting things thank you very much